Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I'm Kirti Sophia Panachan and in today's session we'll be learning the poem No Men Are Foreign by James Kirkup. Let's learn about the author James Kirkup. James Harold Kirkup was born on 23rd April 1918 in South Shields, Durham, England. He completed his education from South Shields High School and Durham University. With an inborn sense of deep solitude and apartness, he was an odd boy out since his school days. He openly demonstrated his protest against the Second World War and spent his time working as an agriculture labourer during those days. Kirkup was openly homosexual and anti-establimentarian. After an unsuccessful career as a school teacher in England in 1956, he moved to Japan where he worked in various universities for 30 years. In 1988, Kirkup moved permanently to Andorra where he continued to write prolifically. He died in 2009. So in this paragraph, we could see that James Kirkup was a person who had his own way of life. He was born on 23rd April 1918 in South Shields and he did his education over there itself. And from his childhood itself, we could see that he had a sense of solitude. Solitude is to be alone and apartness. Apartness means that just going away from the crowd he never becomes a part of the crowd <coughs> and we could see that james kirkup was loud in his opinions he protested against the second world war and he has even done agricultural labor when he opened up uh, about his homosexual uh, attitude and he was totally against anti-establishmentarian, uh, that all were quite revolutionary during that time. He worked as a school teacher in England and it was quite unsuccessful and hence he had to move to Japan in 1956 and after moving to Japan, he worked in various universities for there in for about 30 years and later on in 1988 he permanently moved to Andorra where he wrote a number of works and in 2009 he passed away the early phase of Kirkup's illustrious literary career was modelled on Dylan Thomas and the Surrealists. His published works include several dozen collections of poetry, six volumes of autobiography, translations of numerous works by foreign authors, and thousands of short pieces including travel writing and obituaries. His first collection of published poems was The Drowned Sailor in 1947. Notable among the significant titles by him include The Submerged Village and Other Poems in 1951, A Correct Passion and Other Poems in 1952, the Descent into the Cave and Other Poems in 1957, No Men Are Foreign in 1966, The Body Servant Poems of Exile in 1971, The Lonely Scarecrow in 1983, He Dreamed He Was a Butterfly in 1997, and Marsden Bay in 2008. The publication of The Love That Dares to Speak Its Name, in which he described Jesus as a gay 
invited much controversy and eventually became the last instance of successful trial for blasphemy. He was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society of Literature in 1962 and was awarded the Scott Moncrief Prize for Translation in 1992. Stevie Smith described him as a poet in the English tradition, original without being freakish, contemporary without being fraudulent. Meanings of certain words in this paragraph. Obituary means a notice of a death, especially in a newspaper, typically including a brief biography of the dead person. Blasphemy means the action or offense of speaking in a bad way about God or sacred things. Freakish means very unusual, strange or unexpected. Fraudulently means in a way that involves deception, especially criminal deception. When we look into James Kirkup's earlier career, his literary works were modelled on Dylan Thomas's and the Surrealist work. Dylan Thomas was a Welsh poet and writer. And Surrealism was a cultural movement that developed in Europe in the aftermath of World War I in which artists depicted unnerving, illogical scenes and developed techniques to allow the unconscious mind to express itself. So in Kirkup's works we could see these people have influenced him a lot and he has published a number of works and we have already seen which all works they are and in the work the love that dares to speak its nature was a controversial work since in this work the writer describes jesus christ as a gay person it created a lot of controversy and it was considered uh, as a, a work of blasphemy. Later on we could see that he was elected as a fellow of Royal Society of Literature in 1962 and he received the award Scott Moncrief Prize for translation in 1992. And Steve Smith her full name is Florence Margaret Smith. Uh, she's an English poet and novelist. Described J James Kirkup as a poet in English tradition, original without being freakish and contemporary without being fraudulent. That is how she has described James Kirkup. A brief introduction about this poem. The world witnessed a series of wars in the 20th century. Any war is based on the notion that people of a country are essentially different from those of the neighboring ones, often on the basis of color, creed, geography or language. Thus, myths of racial superiority and cultural hegemony are constructed to differentiate one from the other. Artists and creative writers, on the contrary, aim at transforming the world around them by erasing the imaginary boundary lines, the shadow lines, thus drawn in the name of divisive politics. So, the world that we are living in, even in the 20th or the 21st century, we could see that a number of war occurs for various things. And the war happens mainly because that one region is different from the other region based on color, creed, geography or language. And 
There is a myth of racial superiority and cultural hegemony for certain sections of the society and they kind of uh, want to dominate the world and that results in wars and artists and creative writers on the contrary tries to aim to transform the world around them they want to erase the imaginary boundary line that exists between different nations these lines were drawn between nations uh, since uh, the political uh, things that happened during that time and the artists and creative people are aiming to just erase these boundaries beautifully written upon the theme of the humanity in each human being no men are foreign which was composed in 1966 is a protest against xenophobia racial hatred and armfare xenophobia means dislike of or prejudice against people from other countries there are some people who don't like people from other countries entering their country so they are known as uh, people who have xenophobia racial hatred is an umbrella term used to describe a range of behaviors from abuse or harassment based on race to racially biased reporting and the use of offensive stereotypes in the media the poem which begins and concludes with the rhetorical assertion remember no men are strange no countries foreign want the readers of the perils of separation perils means troubles or worries or problems rhetorical means a question that is asked in order to produce an effect or to make a statement rather than to elicit information so in the poem remember no men are strange no countries foreign this line is repeated a lot and this reminds the readers the uh, worries and problems that happens while people are separated beneath the uniforms which itself is in one sense a forced attempt to bring in uniformity all human beings are ultimately one the poet exposes the horror and brutality of all war and exhorts all that when we hate our brothers we do hate ourselves in this anti-war poem instead of glorifying the romance of combat combat means war the poet emphasizes the similarity of all men and women of the world and a war is fought by constructing imaginary differences between people the simple lyrics of the poem emphasize the communitarianism that means of or relating to social organization in small cooperative partial collectivist communities of all humanity instead of focusing on the debilitating effects of warfare on the individual combatant debilitating means uh, that is to make someone very weak and infirm and the word combat means fighting between armed forces through this paragraph we could understand that the poem uh, is an anti-war poem and it does not glorify uh, the the things that happen in a war instead it tries to reveal to the humanity that if we hate someone and if we uh, involve in a war that means we are hating ourselves and we are killing our brothers so instead of involving yourself in a war we should uh, gradually move towards peace and live in harmony that's the message that the poet is trying to uh, bring forward through this poem so in the next class we will begin the poem so i hope today's session was fruitful for you all see you again in the next class bye bye